All right, so I just realized that I was supposed to uh, name that last assembly the arm hub assembly, so hopefully you named it what it actually was supposed to be, but I just went through and redid that. So now I'm going to go in and do the next assembly, which is going to be the main assembly, and I'm actually going to check the name here, it is partial cart. I'm going to go over to this, that'll be a little bit more helpful for the drawing. So I'm going to go in and place all these parts, except that, I don't need that, because I'm going to need everything here at least once. So this is the part that we want grounded, this is the biggest part, not this here. I'm just going to spread these pieces out so I can see them a bit better. Here we go. So now I'm going to get to work constraining all of these. First, I'm going to start with this little piece right here. And I'm going to go over to Constrain here. I'm going to put these holes, line up their axes. Here we go. So now with this rivet, the rivets go in on the top, I can either copy this rivet and put in all four of these, or if you remember from my last video where I uh, put together an assembly, I can do a pattern. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I've selected my component and select the columns and rows and I need two and two. I actually want these both to be flipped and it looks like this is maybe one and a half, one and a quarter, there. And over here, I'm gonna guess at one and a quarter, not quite right, one and an eighth. Looks like it's perfect. And there, you know, if you don't know, you can right click, open the part, go to measure from center point to center point, you know, there's one and a eighth, or one and a quarter, and here's one and an eighth. So don't guess. I just kind of already knew what they were. <laughs> so guessing is not good when it comes to robots. So I've actually, looks like I've put that on upside down, but it also looks like it's mirrored there. So, well, by that I mean it's the same thing on the top and the bottom here. So what I'm going to do, rather than do that all again, is I'm going to make a midplane here. So if I, well actually I'm just going to go down to, where's midplane? Okay, midplane doesn't want to appear. So I'm going to go measure, the width of this is 3 inches, so half of that is 1.5 inches. So I'm going to put this at negative 1.5 inches, and then go mirror select this and this and this and this and this in the mirror plane click next it's telling me what it's gonna name all of these as and there we go that does that however this gets really annoying because if you upload this in Perforce like you would in our club then you'd have to go and upload all these mirrors and then you've just got a ton of files so instead of actually doing that I just wanted to show you you could do that I'm going to just copy this. Oh, I wonder if I can copy this. Nope. And I'm going to go over here. Oh, it ate that rivet. Here we go. Going to copy the rivet. And I'm just going to do this really fast. Do, 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 do. Here I'm doing my uh, pattern again. Flippy, put in the numbers. 
so that they fit. There we go. So now I've got these parts put on, this, these little uh, angle pieces. Now I'm going to actually orient myself like, like I should be. Here I'm going to be putting on this little uh, potentiometer bracket. And to do that I'm going to do a insert constraint here and here. And then a mate constraint between these two. So that gets that put on right there. Good. Move these up here so I don't have to keep scrolling down everywhere. Here I'm going to put on my uh, arm hub. So notice because this has a, a hex bore, I can't get this inner circle because there isn't an, an inner circle to align the axes with. So instead I use this outer circle. So there we've got this that's just kind of floating in there. And next I'm going to put in these bearings. I'm going to insert them with an insert constraint. And it looks like I'm going to need a couple more. So here, rather than um, doing any sort of pattern, instead I'm just going to copy them. Because it's just one constraint. It doesn't take that much. Well, I don't think. Plus, I like putting bearings in. It's fun. I can have fun. Here we go, now all the bearings are in. And now, I want to put on this bearing retainer. The reason why you need a bearing retainer is because otherwise your bearings come out. And that's no fun, especially if you're at a competition when this happens. Which has happened more than once in our team's history. So here, I've got this constrained. And obviously I don't want it you know, mated to this because that's actually smushing down on the bearing. Instead I'm just going to constrain it to this top of the bearing. And there we go. Bearing retainer in. Now that all that's left is this axle piece and the little encoder bracket deal. Which I will get to in a moment. There it is. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. So now we see that a couple of these things can just slide wherever we want them to, or wherever they want to. We don't want them to slide, including this. This can just rotate through without actually turning this bearing, and that's cheating. While it doesn't actually really matter in this assembly, um, just for the invent purpose of having CAD model. However, if you want to do this, constrain it so that it actually turns the bearing, what you can do is you know kind of mate these oops, mate these faces to the inside faces of this bearing so to do this I'm gonna slide this all the way out here oh wait that's a round bearing okay so actually that's oop, that was already there so actually because this is round it's not really going to spin that bearing my bad however it physically can't slide through like this because this hex is bigger than this round hole that it's trying to fit through. So what I am going to do is constrain it. I'm going to grab this little edge, this little face here, and constrain it to here, which is physically as far as, that would, as it would be able to go. See, now it's not just sticking out wherever it wants. And of course, this piece is going to need to be sticking on there somehow. And knowing how, see this is a little, it's like a shaft color coupler piece, and there would be a potentiometer or encoder that sticks on right through here, and has a little axle just like this. So I don't want this to be constrained so far that there wouldn't actually be any room there. Instead I'm going to try and find a nice halfway point like here, and do a flush constraint with that end there. So it's just about, you know, halfway on here. So now here, this is where I was talking about uh, you want to make the hex parts actually spin on each other. So I'm going to grab this face here and try and just grab one of these inside faces here. Oh, look at that. There's an error. Bad error. So 
I'm guessing that it's going to be this mate here. If I delete this, then it will let me do this. Which I think I'll get away with because really the way in real life how this will be attached is on this axle piece. So here we've got this and we can see the axle actually spinning as I move this, which is good. That's what we want. So right now we can see that this is just sliding everywhere it wants to, which is no bueno, no good. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to constrain this. Hmm, how do I want to constrain this? There are lots of ways I could do this. I think that the simplest and fastest way is just to do an offset here. So notice here the offset is zero inches and so these are completely mated. But if I go in and put like a half inch offset, then it's right about almost halfway. Maybe try 0.625. That looks pretty much perfect. Good enough for right now. But notice it can still spin all the way like this. And while, of course, it won't be able to in real life because it'll run into this, for those people who really like to play around an inventor and make their assemblies pretty, we can constrain this using some motion constraints. So if I go over to angle constraint, I've got a directed angle, which we can see from yellow is going to be the, uh, well, like the resting position is blue is going to be where it can move to. And so we can see that it's moving in one direction here, whereas here we've got these two blue and they can move in both directions. Whereas this one, I have no idea. <laughs> so if I go over to this one, undirected angle, which means that it's going to move whatever my maximum is, whatever I put for my maximum angle in either direction. And if I select this plane or this face and this face, I've got zero degrees right now. But if I go down here to maximum and I say 90 degrees, click apply, now in either direction it can move in 90 degrees. Or up to 90 degrees, which is what we want. So now our assembly looks all pretty. Um, yes, there we go. I'm going to save this like I should have at the beginning. Partial cart, which is what it actually is saved as. I forgot to put in the bolts. So I'm going to go over to Design Accelerator, Bolted Connection, just like we did before. Start plane, Circular Reference. So I know that last time I said if you just keep clicking back on Circular Reference, you can select these other holes. But if I go, see, when I do this, I have to go back and select this, you know, for every single hole, which is annoying. But if I don't do that, if instead I follow inventor's order and go down to termination plane first, then I can go back, go back and just click circular reference once more and then select everything else, which is much faster. So now that I've got my field set up, I'm going to go and put in the bolts. So I've got ANSI socket head bolts is what it looks like it's telling me to do. Yep, and I'm just going to do the ones I did before. Apparently the ones that we're actually supposed to use aren't showing up on my computer, so I'm just going to use these ones that look like they're right. There we go. And the same thing on the other side, I think. I don't know. Let's look at our drawing. Yes, there are indeed bolts there. We shall put the bolts then. Mwahaha. <laughs> So here we'll just go to start plane, one of the circular references, termination, go back and do the rest of the circular references, bolt, nut. So if you select, you know, click to add a fastener after the bolt and you don't have this little drop down thing, it's because you selected the one right after the bolt. If you imagine this is kind of like a sandwich, you've got the bolt and then the washers and then the nuts. So you've got like these different layers and if you select the layer right after the bolt it thinks you want a washer. When really we don't care about washers in this example we're just gonna go straight to the nuts so we have to skip that little aisle, that little layer. And there we go and that looks like all the bolts I needed to do. See it wasn't that painless and easy? That was painless and easy. I was just being a dork. So that's it. Now the assembly is finally finished, and now I'll go on to the other parts. 
and I'm gonna leave this video. Next I will do a couple of renders and show you the part drawings. So yeah, that's it.